You recorded this? Obviously. I do not like sister location, but for the longest okay. time, I thought I, I did. For myself. years, I would look where you realize you're a 45 year old man and a small rocket ship roller coaster isn't actually very interesting at all. And is in fact uh, quite that's bland the point and boring. Where it becomes Maybe fun you again. still try. You ever been on those kitty coasters, Billy? Uh, I think once. You wouldn't group of friends on kitty coasters when you're old? That's where it gets fun again. <laughs> I'm really curious. Candies aren't fun. <laughs> so, no, you go out, you having a good blast, you screaming like it's the biggest thing ever. You create your own fun from those. I think when me and my friend were, I think it was twelve, we went to this like <laughs> local carnival at this like parking lot, and there was these giant teddy bears that we could spin like a teacup ride. And the second we were able to spin them, we spun them so fast, the random that got put in with us was vomiting and having to, like, <laughs> emergency stop the system to get him out. <laughs> and when the kid entered, he asked, like, are you going to spin it? We said, yeah, we're going to spin it lots. And then he vomited, had to emergency stop the ride and everything. <laughs> Just because he didn't understand that when we said we're going to spin it lots. We were going to spin it so fast that this guy almost fell out of the roller coaster, or the seat. <laughs> Try to fit into that now tiny, tiny seat out of pure curiosity, but the ride soon to follow is guaranteed to be one that will never live up to the expectations you set in your head when you were younger. Except, a kitty roller coaster has significantly more value than sister location, because you can burn it down to scraps and metal to build something <laughs> worth way more money. If you buy sister location, no, no, no. You sell the wood, you don't burn the wood, you sell the wood. <laughs> no, you burn it. Well, to get into all what? of that... What? Is this guy a furry? Uh, I mean, you can see the drawing as much as I can. Is he, like, supposed to be a FNAF thing? No. Is this guy's first video game FNAF? Uh... Look at the channel. It kind of looks like he's a FNAF, like, uh... I he mean, <laughs> yeah, yes, it's FNAF. <laughs> so his character is literally FNAF. <laughs> this man's hating on FNAF, yet his career is built on FNAF. Uh, look, look at the first, second video upload 3.9 million views. FNAF video, yeah. <laughs> if I'm if I wasn't in middle school when this game came out, I, I would be this guy. <laughs> Such an easy train to jump on. Look, he did one video that. Oh, actually, no, he did more up top. But all these are FNAF. Like seven months ago, FNAF. <laughs> A couple months ago, FNAF. Four months ago, FNAF. <laughs> this game has been dead for like years now, right? What was the last game? It was uh, like the the one with Michael, right? No, the last game was Security Breach. I got a uh, DLC. Oh, what was that? Um, DLC released July 25th. Anyway. We first have to look back at every FNAF game before it to understand how we got here. Trust me, it's worth getting this out of the way now, and it won't take very long. Sure. I guarantee you I can do the shaky vent part of sister location, just stay in place, and not get jump scared by the time this section is over. In fact, I'm so confident in this that I'm going to save you the effort of booting up the game Markiplier. and keep a vent cam in the corner of the screen so we can make sure I'm telling the truth. FNAF 1 is seen by the general. I mean, <laughs> I mean, how does that tell you the truth? <laughs> I mean, like, n none of the jump scares in the game are, like, scary. What does this prove? <laughs> general public as a spooky jump scare survival game. And yeah, it is, but if you've played it before, you would know that there's way more to it than that. It acts more like a strategy game where you need to keep track of a bunch of things at once to make sure you- No. No. <laughs> no, you don't. You can beat the entire game while keeping the camera on one screen and then just l spamming the fucking left and right. It's literally an RNG, and there's no strategy. You barely have to use a camera. Like, one of the integral mechanics. One of the only <laughs> one things of you the can three do. three mechanics in the game. <laughs> you barely need it. You can survive the full night. To me, this is the core of Five Nights at Freddy's.
The RNG for the first night is so bad that you can go th from 12 to 2 with absolutely nothing happening. Yep. <laughs> at least the original run of the series. Every night, new threats are added or made more aggressive to test the skills of the player and make sure they're always staying on the absolute tips of their toes. Boiling down FNAF to its basic gameplay elements is essentially one gameplay loop that is constantly being made more difficult as you continue to play each night. That is Five Nights at Freddy's from a literal gameplay standpoint. This formula is then followed loosely for the next three titles in the series. FNAF 2 has a different gameplay loop from 1, but the structure of the game and how it increases in difficulty remains the same. Each night, more stuff is added or made harder until you beat the game. FNAF 3, while only having one animatronic technically, introduces the Phantom slowly throughout the nights to make you play the game more it is not slowly throughout the nights. They introduce them on, I think, yeah, the second night, and they throw all of them at you. That, that's not slow. <laughs> yeah. More carefully and strategically. Springtrap, of course, gets harder to deal with each night of the game as well. FNAF 4, once again, follows the basic boiled down formula for a FNAF game. Sure, it's a little different from the three prior games in its presentation and style of gameplay loop, but at the end of the day, it's still a series of nights that follow the exact same gameplay loop. FNAF 4 is the gameplay loop without one of the mechanics. Yep. <laughs> that adds or adjusts threats as the game progresses. You may be thinking after all this, of course Scott would want to try something different after four games in a row following the same core gameplay philosophy. No, and you just do this exact same. That's how you make money. <laughs> repeatability. Repeatability. <laughs> Have you launched seeing Call of Duty? It's the exact same game. You shipped out like different 3,000 times. No one plays the campaign. It's literally just multiplayer. No one cares. You're not wrong. Same game over and over. a game called FNAF World. This game, while maybe not being super relevant to the conversation at hand, just yet. It's not relevant to the conversation because it defeats your entire point. Is still an important turning point in the series to bring up. Since this game is an RPG and not a typical FNAF game, there was bound to be a- I take that back, it defeats multiple of- m Multiple points that he makes. A whole lot more yes. writing and a direct story compared to the previous entries. Which is true. However, it's the way the game was written that's really important here. A majority of the writing in FNAF World is very- Hang on, hang on. I need to hear that again. Writing and a- He decided to make a game called FNAF World. This game, while maybe not being super relevant to the conversation at hand just yet, is still an important turning point in the series to bring up. Since this game is an RPG and not a typical FNAF game, there was bound to RPG. be a whole lot more writing and a- Oh, that's the other one. Yeah, FNAF World is uh, the RPG one. Wasn't all of them are RPG because you're playing as the caretaker? Uh, you know what they mean by RPG. It's a fucking like turn based strategy <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I got it. Just yet is still an important turning point in the series to bring up. Since this game is an RPG and not a typical FNAF game, there was bound to be a whole lot more writing and a direct story compared to the previous entries. Yeah, it's almost like it's literally somehow better than all of the others. The best, of course. And <laughs> considering it's FNAF World, that's fucking embarrassing, but it's true. Which is true. However, it's the way the game was written that's really important here. A majority of the writing in FNAF World is very self-aware and full of jokes. This, of course, works fine for an RPG spin-off that isn't trying to take itself very seriously. But just keep that in the back of your head as we continue forward in this video. One pixelated death in a Halloween update later, and we finally reach sister location on our timeline. Now, this game is very different from the other mainline FNAF games that came before it, opting to be a point-and-click style game with mini-games spliced here and there. Sister Location completely throws away the core FNAF gameplay loop that we were just talking about, which in theory could work if the game was still fun. So, does Sister Location do a good job moving the FNAF series forward by removing the gameplay that made it so interesting in the first place? Made the game so interesting in the first place. So, yeah, I'm struggling here. What what's exact what exactly is interesting about uh, flipping through cameras and going left to right? It literally not doing anything else. Yeah, it wasn't an in-depth game. Five times in a row. Six times. Sorry. 
The only difference is the frequency of how long you had to check stuff. <laughs> but there was no strategy you could play. It's just open and closed door if something <laughs> was there. You had to hope RNG was on your side or you opened the door at the right time so that uh, you like saved energy. There's really nothing. That's Interesting gameplay, sure. Dude, just read the title. We're gonna be here for a long time. What? No, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm not do. I'm. I am actively not playing the game, and there is noises happening that is, that are bad. I'm. I'm gonna. It's almost like that's how the entire series has been up to this point. You're not moving, and there are noises happening. <laughs> that's crazy. For every positive thing I have to say about this game. There's about 10 negative things bouncing around in a harmless shaky vent, just waiting to be blurted out. And yes, that whole shaky vent section was a bit of a joke, but it does help illustrate one of my biggest issues with this game. This is by far the least replayable game in the entire series. Every FNAF game before this encouraged a ton of replayability, whether it be through the inclusion of a cut- Ton of replayability and shows FNAF 1. Like, <laughs> the fucking least replayable- game in the entire series once you beat it there's there's nothing to do <laughs> yeah make it harder it's the same mechanic <laughs> hey there's you... no different there's no different play style you could do hey you know that that <laughs> thing that you did like six times up to now well get, hey guess what you can make it harder and then do it all over again doesn't that sound great <laughs> It's not even different. <laughs> like, it's just the frequency of number generation, RNG. It's, it, it's the same five scripts this entire game is based off. One for each character, and then one to control all the rooms. It's nothing changing except the RNG frequency of what number you can choose. It's like in 420 mode, is like so batshit insane that you have to rely on fucking RNG luck to get through it. Yeah. What? What is the fucking enticing part about that? I, I don't know. I played the game on my phone in middle school. <laughs> I, I, I didn't find this interesting. It was just a kill time. <laughs> it was a time killer. I had to wait for homeroom to end, you know? <laughs> to mess around with the game's core mechanics on harder difficulties or extra challenge modes, such as those found in the FNAF 4 Halloween update. Even FNAF World has a million different it's amazing that you can only name one game with a challenge mode. So in FNAF 2, the challenges were different settings for the custom night. FNAF 3 was a nightmare mode, which is a literal fucking nightmare because of how shit it is. And then you have FNAF 4, FNAF 4 the Halloween modes. That's it. Sounds like a bonus level. Is this some Yandere sim? Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Easter eggs. I mean, they they are bonus levels. That's what they are. So They're... this is yonder SM game. <laughs> Easter eggs. Different endings and secrets to find that would maybe encourage the player to go through it a couple times to find everything there is to offer. It's almost like FNAF World is the better of all the games. Wow, well, huh? that's okay. crazy. Also, with the extremely large number of animatronics you can use in your party in that game, just the ability to use a different team each time encourages replayability. Holy shit, FNAF World is infinitely more replayable than the fucking examples that you showed. It's crazy. Sister Location, aside from its own custom night mode, which we will get to much later, lacks any replayability in a series pretty much famous for it. So do the rest of the fucking custom nights. What are you talking about? That's all there is. <laughs> There's nothing more. Is FNAF famous for replayability? I don't think so. I think it's just, it just was the game that people needed. Well, it's a game that content creators needed at the time where content was low. If I had the program skills I have now, I could have probably made FNAF within a week. It's not that hard of a game. It, like I said, it's five scripts. One each character, one to do all the movement controls of the player. You could throw some more scripts in if you're bad at coding, but it's literally nothing except PNGs that you look at. And then a couple different PNGs for different movements. So like, this game is not difficult at all. It's like FNAF is famous because it got lucky. It was at the right time in the right place. 
It's the next yandere sim. It, yandere. It, it literally blew up because some random person happened to suggest it to Markiplier, and he happened to see the comments, and he happened to play it. And then it spiraled from there. If Mark ignored it, this would have died. It, it would have. Only, like, a few people outside of, like, any kind of creator would have known this game existed because they followed the creator or were told by the creator to, like, hey, check out my game. It's not that good of a game. It's not famous for its replayability. It's famous because of the fucking little lore things that Scott hid in the first game, which made everyone freak the fuck out and make it's a game theory videos about it. And then it went from there. Those are just mistakes. I think they were just inconsistencies that he had to, like, come up with on the spot. Yeah, because this was a one-off shot. FNAF 1 was a Hail Mary shot. After that, if it didn't fail, he would stop making games. He didn't intend for it to really blow up the way it did. And that's why all the problems with the story shit happened, because he didn't have a fucking direction when he started this. Yeah. <laughs> That's why, that's why he had to restart the fucking story like three times. That's why there's so many plot holes in different uh, prologue series like Springtrap. Oh. And there's like, the, I, I think it was something else about another kid. What's happened to Bite of 87? Which one's first? How did everything happen? Oh, wait, there's four stories for that now? Or three? Sorry, my bad. Yeah, three or four. Sister Location insists on treating itself like some kind of free roam game. You have to use WASD for pretty much every single movement action. Holy shit, you have to use the movement keys to do movement actions. Who would have fucking thought? <laughs> it's like it's the only way to move except arrow <laughs> keys. It's, it's, it's like the universally understood movement keys. WASD. What did you expect them to use? <laughs> you want to use space to move forward? Because <laughs> that that's seems the only right. direction you can move, then maybe. <laughs> What is this argument? <laughs> Including pressing W to go forward in the vent. It's fine to set up a game like this, but at least utilize the fake free roam in interesting ways. For example, instead of this stupid vent section being just for spooks and not actually dangerous in any way, give the player the ability to turn around in the vent to look behind. Instead of just going forward, give them a bit, give them an ability that one doesn't make any fucking sense, and two just let them do more than just go forward. Like, that doesn't solve your issue. It just adds more to the issue that you had. Because you can still move forward in this example. Also, how could you fucking turn around in this vent? Have you ever been in, like, vents that you could crawl around in? Unless it's, like, a super factor, like the space station. They're not designed for people to be inside of them. No. You don't need to perform repairs on an air vent. It's kind of just a, a pipe of air. <laughs> You're not even supposed to be able to fit a person in these. Like a toddler maybe can go in one, but they're not supposed to be in there. There should be fans every couple of feet to repel air around through critical <laughs> points. <laughs> Some radiators to heat up the place and you see units to cool it down if the building's that big, but... There should be no way a person can travel through air vents at all. These these are service vents, so they're like just wide enough for a person to fit through. I'm the turn this boring, pointless vent section into a mini game where you need to turn around every time the shaking happens to scare away the bitty babs, making the ruckus at the end of the vent. It doesn't even need to be a very long gameplay section, but it at the very least adds more gameplay to the game overall. It makes it less of a snooze fest on repeat playthroughs. I mean, the vents aren't that long anyway. You just crawl through them and then you're done. Instead of, oh boy, time to go through this stupid vent again and hear the scary noises, it turns into, oh boy, time to go through this stupid vent again and get attacked by monsters for no fucking reason. <laughs> oh boy, time to play this part of the game again in this video game that I enjoy and respect. Yes, I am. Respect. I think this is his uh, 
sarcastic input. <laughs> I don't know if he actually believes. I, I, I can't imagine he actually believes that. <laughs> I'm that petty. I will talk about a 10 second section of this game that nobody has ever thought of in probably literal years. First though, we need to talk about something that doesn't even have to do with the game itself really. We got to talk about the box art. Well, okay. It's hard to call it box art when it's really just the cover for the digital game, but you know what I mean. Let's take a look at the box arts for every FNAF game up until this point. Uh, except for FNAF World, because literally, who cares? FNAF 1. You do? Because you brought it out multiple times? <laughs> it's only to make this argument stronger. <laughs> Freddy Fazbear is front and center. Makes sense, it's the first game, and he's literally the namesake of the series. Okay, we'll remember that. FNAF 2, Withered Freddy. Once again, makes sense, and looks a lot better than if Toy Freddy was on the cover. Sorry, Smike. FNAF 3, Springtrap. This makes sense. While not the namesake of the series, he's the only real animatronic in said game, and is the main antagonist of it. It would be pretty weird if this game, all about Springtrap and his story and lore, had a picture of Phantom Freddy on the cover. Especially because Phantom Freddy is literally just a another game mechanic. It's not a, he's not an, an active antagonist in any part of the story or the game. He can't kill you, he just inconveniences you. Right? That Did would take away from the trap exists before FNAF 3. Uh, Was there any sign of him before FNAF 3? Uh no. So then FNAF 3 is supposed to be the creation of an origin story that didn't exist already. Yes. So it's just a, like a cash grab of a name that happened to work out because all the plot inconsistencies of other ones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> importance of Springtrap in, in this game. Okay, so clearly Scott is not above using different characters for the box arts if said character is extremely prominent in the game. Good to know. FNAF 4, Nightmare Freddy. You could argue that Nightmare Fredbear would be more fitting here, but- Nightmare Fredbear shows up twice. Nightmare Freddy is active throughout the entire game. So no, it wouldn't. I gotta just put the scariest thing on the cover, you know? <laughs> Get all those little kids to, to have nightmares about it so it's on their mind, you know? They gotta beat the game to cover the nightmares. <laughs> supposed to be a surprise in the game, since his design was never fully revealed before the launch of FNAF 4. Using Nightmare Freddy here makes a lot of sense. Okay. And because Freddy is once again the namesake of the fucking series. Okay, so now we're at sister location. You'd think that Circus Baby would be front and center here, right? They guide you through the entire game. Their design isn't a secret, as it was shown extensively in teasers and the trailer alongside the literal intro and literal title screen of the game. Okay, so let's see it. What's the box art for a sister location? Funtime Freddy. Yes, because Funtime Freddy is an active antagonist throughout the game. Like, all of the yeah. game. And he's also, once again, the namesake of the fucking series. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Chuck E. Cheese without Chucky, you know? <laughs> you can't just have Chuck E. Cheese with whatever his side characters are. I don't even know their names. That's how, like, irrelevant they are. You can't, <laughs> you can't really do that. You can't change the name of the series for a single game. You gotta bring him back somehow, or no one's gonna know what game this is. Fun time, It kind of works out with three because of all the hype, but <laughs> there's nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> Fun time, Freddy. Fun Time Freddy, a character who is, yes, in the game, and yes, has a lot of screen time. Yes, in the game, yes, has a lot of sc screen time. Let's see what the fucking problem is. But isn't that important overall to Sister Location, and is clearly taking the spotlight away from a much more obvious candidate. Wow, what a stupid point. Why would you even bring this up? Oh uh, yeah. Or are you even trying here? Blah, blah, blah. One, clearly Click Team and Scott thought this was important as well, because guess who's on the box art of the console ports of Sister Location? That's right, motherfucking Circus. It's almost like the box art can be interchangeable no matter fucking what. What's your point? Yeah. It's, it's literally yes. just art. <laughs> what is your issue? <laughs> I don't even know. It's just, <laughs> Baby. It's just a complaint for it to complain. I'm using this kind of funny note about the game to segue into a much bigger point. That being that Circus Baby is heavily underutilized in their own star game. This is THE Circus Baby game. 
So tell me why the only render of her in any of the actual gameplay is her lifelessly sitting on a fucking conveyor belt in one of the worst sections of the entire game, which trust me- Because there is a style in the psychological horror genre, which is to have you see the monster as little as possible. You. That's just a general thing. Like the more time the monster's on screen, the less you're scared of it. But again, the name of the game is Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> Freddy's is always gonna be the main character you have to be scared of. And then they started adding all this other stuff, like the puppy, like Springtrap, and now <laughs> this person. It, it's not something that needs to really exist. It's Five Nights at Freddy's. You just need Freddy. It's like, hiding the monster is not uncommon in the horror genre. You see it used constantly. You see it in Amnesia, The Dark Descent. You can see it in, I'm, I'm struggling to think of fucking other examples in the game industry, but in movies, you can see it in Bird Box. Uh, that failed for multiple reasons, because it never fucking um, cashed in on not on hiding the monster. And never reveal the fucking monster. At some point, you need to show the audience the monster at some point. Um, you need something to be scared of. It yes. can't just be an invisible thing. It has to exist. Yeah, so you Oh, have... I can say the monster's over there, but it if it's not real, no one's going to be afraid of it. Yeah, so you have to show it at some point. And in this game, Scott decided, hey, let's show them Circus Baby in this down, powered off, decommissioned state. Because, you know, why the fuck is she turned on? Why is it maybe she'll fucking jump at me if I do something wrong? The only reason why this section fails is because when you fail the fail state it's because a completely different entity jumps out at you not fucking baby but there's a reason for that to me we will get to later for a game that focuses so much on circus baby and has so much of her talking and building a bond with the player there sure is a major lack of her physically being there ever yes that is a valid style of horror storytelling learn the fucking genre that you're criticizing even if all her That's renders were kept main. It's the main thing of the horror genre. <laughs> Show the monster as little as possible. It makes it scarier. It makes the the viewer's imagination play against them. It's the fear of the dark. You don't see what's in the dark. You don't see what's lurking there that you know will kill you. The more you see it, the less you're afraid of it, because then you think about it, oh, this is a thing I can it, it exists, you know? It's not this phantom of my imagination that can be anywhere at any time. It is this thing right here that has all these flaws that can be taken advantage of. And this is the fucking thing that he's showing right now. This is adding to that point. The, all that you're seeing of this character is this happy, I'm a, f I'm a friendly robot that uh, gives presents to kids and cakes and shit. And then when you actually see her at the end, she kills a kid. It's like, oh no, that's not good. And then you actually see her in the yeah, yeah. in the main I'm game sure. it's like oh shit this probably isn't fucking good now <laughs> she's probably not on my side because she's a little crazy this guy is complaining i like this character so i wanted to see more of it that's the fucking complaint yeah <laughs> i'm, like, it's I'm sorry it's, uh, it's on the cover you know it's the cover <laughs> art the cover art it's it, that's the important thing here in heavy shadows, it would at least be better than literally almost never seeing her at all. You never see her behind the glass here, she never jump scares the player once in the entire game, despite essentially being the main antagonist, and no, Enner does not count, I'm talking about vanilla circus baby. Yeah, so the reason she doesn't fucking jump scare you when you're with her on the conveyor belt is because... The point is the circus baby that you see on the conveyor belt is an empty shell and she is fucking tricking you to do something and she's already out. That's it's the fucking point. <laughs> yeah, it's still Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> the only coined the name Sister Location had to come up with the villain for it, you know?
if it's an actual like if this is real life, you have Chuck E. Cheese and you have another Chuck E. Cheese. It's not called Chuck E. Cheese sister location. You don't have a different ensemble of animatronics. <laughs> it's still Chuck E. Cheese. That's how they're across like most of the country and state. It's still Chuck E. Cheese. It's never not going to be Chucky there. You can't just have a completely different cast for this one location alone and have that be like <laughs> the main attraction is that it's none of the characters that the kids want to see. <laughs> he, it's just a character representing the name Sister Location. It's no. not actually Five Nights at Freddy's. It's just that character. <laughs> 